Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is Kevin Mon, Chief Investment Officer and President at Henyon and Walsh Asset Management. We're going to discuss how to define quality in equities and fixed income selection process. Kevin, it's great to see you as always. Welcome back to Trade Talks. Thanks so much, Joe. Great to be back. All right, let's start with the macro here. Of course, a key question is, are we heading into a recession? What's your thought on the bigger picture? I might argue, Jill, that mathematically, we're already in a recession. First quarter this year, we saw nominal GDP rise by 6.5%. However, after accounting for inflation, GDP actually fell by 1.4% on a real basis. So unless we believe that inflation has come down markedly in the second quarter, which we know it hasn't, or economic growth that's picked up significantly in the second quarter, which it likely hasn't. We in all likelihood are entering now a second consecutive quarter of negative real GDP, which meets the technical definition of recession. However, Jill, what's different this time is that the unemployment rate is still at historic lows and the consumer continues to spend. But we know that they're now dipping into their personal savings and putting more in their credit card. So how much longer can that last? to keep up with these inflated prices. So Kevin, given that view, how aggressive do you think the Federal Reserve will or can be? Great question. And we know that they have four remaining meetings this year. They meet again in August, or rather in July. And we know that in all likelihood, according to Chair Powell, even though they told us just last month that rates hikes above 50 basis points weren't on the table, we saw a 75 basis point hike in June and we'll likely see another one in July. That will bring the Fed funds target rate to two and a quarter percent. They don't meet in August and then they come back in September. At that point in Jill, once again, we'll likely be in the technical definition of a recession. How aggressively is the Fed going to want to be in the face of a bear market and a recession? We think they may only raise by 25 basis points as a result in September. They don't meet again in October and perhaps they raise two more times in November and December by 25 basis points each leaving us with a Fed target rate of 3% by the end of the year. I don't think they can go much more than that at the risk of putting the economy into a much deeper and much more long prolonged recession than it needs to be. Yep, it's tough, especially when you're thinking about food prices and gas prices and how that exactly. kind of becomes a political hot button as well. Going into the midterms, the, the, I would not want to be in their position of trying to balance this act here. How should investors react to all the uncertainty and volatility that we're seeing? Well, they should resist the temptation, the knee-jerk reaction of going to the sidelines, which would impact their longer-term portfolio performance, Jill. They should revisit the asset allocation that's in place in their portfolio, be true to their risk tolerance, and also recognize that over the long term, it's your time in the market as opposed to trying to time the market that is more important. We know that trying to time the market means you need to be right twice, right, Jill? You need to know when to get out and when to get back in. However, we did the research here at Smart Trust, and what we found over the past 15 years, that had you missed out on just the 10 best days in the market, your returns would have been cut in half. So stay true to your risk tolerance, build a diversified portfolio to help weather these bouts of volatility, but invest for the long term, not making short term knee jerk reactions. So Kevin, how would you define quality when you're thinking about your equity and fixed income decisions? Yes, quality is one area that we're leaning into very heavily here at Smart Trust. On the fixed income side of the equation, I might suggest looking at investment grade corporate bonds or treasury securities or municipal bonds. On the equity side of the equation, look for those companies with strong balance sheets, with free cash flow, that pay a dividend, have low debt to asset ratios. And here's a new statistics for all of your viewers out there. Look at their Altman Z statistics. If you're not familiar with it, that was a score that was developed back in 1968 by a professor at NYU. And that Altman Z statistics attempts to predict the probability of a company declaring bankruptcy over the next two years. How great is that statistic in light of an upcoming recessionary environment that we will likely be in? So look at that Altman Z statistics, lean into those companies with strong balance sheets that pay a dividend, and I think quality is going to win out over the course of the next couple of years. I learn a new term every single time you're on the show, Kevin. We appreciate <laughs> that. So if we get a little bit even more micro here, where are you seeing growth? Yes, growth and income opportunities. We know we talked about dividend stocks, but where else? 
Yeah, I, well, again, we did the research here and we look at those sectors that have historically performed best when the economy moves from a slowdown into a recessionary environment. Sectors that jump to the top of the page for us are healthcare, utilities, and consumer staples. Some names in our smart trust portfolios in each of those sectors include on the healthcare side, companies such as Merck or even Brister Miles Sprint. On the utility side, how about Duke Energy? And of course, the consumer staples, we like Hershey, we like General Mills, and the name that was in the news this week, Kellogg. Even when the economies do go into recessions, generally people still eat cereal, and perhaps even more so during those economic slowdown periods. So those are the areas that we like on the equity side, and municipal bonds, certainly at these levels, coming off of a 40-year low in terms of first quarter performance, seem like a very attractive entry point for those high net worth income investors looking for tax-free income opportunities. And Kevin, to wrap up here, when we look at the bounce that we had in the market, what was it yesterday, Tuesday, June 21st, in the near term, is it tough to trust those two, 3% bounces, or are you looking to find a little bit longer stability on those days that were up? I believe that there's more short-term bouts of volatility ahead for us. Just this year alone, 36% of the time, the market has closed higher or lower by one and a half percent or more. That's a tremendous amount of volatility. Until we get some more clarity from the Federal Reserve about how aggressive they're ultimately going to be, and if, in fact, inflation is starting to moderate, I would anticipate more short-term bouts of volatility. But as we move towards the end of the year, Jill, and if the Fed does, in fact, turn less aggressive, I think then you could see an upside potential for the markets to close out this year. All right, Kevin, we appreciate the insight as always. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.